Welcome to Financial Accounting, presented by Professor Aldridge and yours truly, Bean Counters, Dave Marshall. A sincere thank you goes to Professor Aldridge for allowing me to pre present his excellent lecture series on financial accounting. The lectures break accounting down into small and easily digestible bites. Buckle up and enjoy the ride. Welcome to this video on adjusting entry basics. Let's start with a question. Why adjust account balances? Why do they need adjustment? Well, adjusting entries are necessary because the unadjusted trial balance may not contain up-to-date and complete data, as you have learned when you studied the unadjusted trial balance. Adjusting entries update asset and liability accounts as well as revenue and expense accounts. Without this adjustment, our financial statements could mislead investors and creditors. Finally, adjusting entries help ensure that the revenue recognition and the matching principle are followed. Let's look at an example. A company buys $500 of supplies during the month. At the end of the month, the unadjusted trial balance shows $500 for supplies. Is $500 the correct amount? Isn't it likely that the company has used some of the supplies? Yet, uh, no one wants to make a journal entry each time someone takes a pen or staples some papers together. That would be a, a horribly inefficient use of time. Yet, pens were used, papers were stapled, and so all of that needs to be accounted for. So this is why accountants record adjusting entries at the end of the accounting period. Failure to record the adjusting journal entry to adjust the supplies account would result in an overstatement of the asset. We would report too much supplies. And an understatement of the expense. We would report too little supplies expense at the end of the accounting period. Overstatement and understatement are two concepts students tend to struggle with. They definitely require critical thinking about the transaction to figure out. So when we make adjusting entries, there are two main types, deferrals and accruals. One type of deferral is prepaid expense. This means that cash is paid before the expense is incurred. Some common examples of adjusting entries for prepaid expenses are prepaid rent, supplies, and depreciation. Another type of deferral is unearned revenue. This means that cash is received before the revenue is earned. Some common examples of adjusting entries for unearned revenues are unearned rent revenue, unearned season ticket revenue, unearned airline ticket revenue. One type of an accrual is accrued revenues. This means that cash is received after the revenue is earned. Some common examples of adjusting entries for accrued revenues are service revenue and interest revenue. Another type of accrual is accrued expenses. This means that cash is paid after the expense is incurred. Companies tend to have a lot of accrued expenses as this is the most common adjusting entry. Some common examples of adjusting entries for accrued expenses are salary expense and interest expense. Finally, let's look at some characteristics of adjusting journal entries and how they differ from regular journal entries made in the ordinary course of business. The first is that there is no underlying business event that causes an adjusting entry. They happen most often because of the passage of time or that information isn't available in the period in which we need it. Record, uh, they are recorded at the end of an accounting period, so adjusting journal entries will be dated at the end of the month. They will always include one income statement account and one balance sheet account. Again, this requires some critical thinking, but you can usually figure out the accounts affected uh, by an adjusting entry 
if you can remember that. And finally, and this one is very important, they will never, ever, never, ever, ever include the cash account. At some point, you are really going to be, be tempted to use the cash account when trying to make an adjusting entry. Please resist that. It is certainly wrong. Now, let me make a note that there is one exception to that, uh, and that is when we adjust the cash account when we're doing bank reconciliations. But that's not ha happening in this context, so don't use the cash account. They, uh, and finally, uh, they are required every time a company prepares financial statements. Look at the step here. You can't do step seven, preparing financial statements, without first doing step five, journalize and post the adjusting entries. And that concludes this uh, short video on the basics of adjusting entries.